Hello, hello! It's Reiko Kovasin here with a little mixed media tag live. Again, I'm checking that the video seems be broadcasting into the group. Yes. And that's how I'll then see your comments as well from the computer. So, hello, hello, sorry about that noise. And this is something we're doing today. A little mixed media tag with golden sands and under the sea blues and tones. There's a couple of tricks or ideas I want to share with you with this one and maybe hopefully those will inspire you. So I'm just waiting for just a little bit longer even though the time is correct so that if you can see and hear me you could put either thumbs up or some kind of message to the chat so I know that I'm not babbling on my own here that everything is working at least I can see the feed myself so probably the video part is okay but please let me know about the sound if it's okay I, I hope so Everything looks and sounds amazing. Thank you, Mateus. Thank you so much. Okay, then we can continue or actually start. Just a couple of words in Finnish, my native tongue, if there happens to be any Finns around. Eli heippa hei! Tervetuloa! Englanniksi tosiaan pääosallisesti mennään. Muut sama systeemi kuin aina ennenkin, eli suomeksi voi esittää kysymyksiä vastaan sitten kahdella kielellä. Niin, niin, tällaista ollaan tänään tekemässä. Ja ei muuta kuin ruvetaan hommiin. Okay, perfect. There's actually... Actually, Finns here. Hello, hello. Hyvin kuuluu ja näkyy. Kiitos. Okay, let's get started. So, the base for this is just... A, heippa Mari, heippa Teija. A white chipboard tag. Or actually, it was this color, but all already painted it white because I'm adding a piece of tissue paper my on, pa uh, on top so if this would be even a darker tone this might be okay because that's not that dark of gray but if it would be like brown or even black chipboard then you need to add something light before you add the tissue paper because otherwise the pattern won't show as nicely. Same as with the heippa heijasta. As with those, um, what are they called? Paper napkins. If you use those, you probably notice that the white part is actually the napkin part which you then take away. So if you put it on top of blue or red, all that was white is then the other color. The same idea here because the paper itself is so like translucent thin so if you put it on top of something dark the pattern might not show as well and it alters the color so easier to add a layer of white gesso before starting now let's see I'm opening the sheet here and what shall we add there's some nice details here, not that they might all be gone when we are done because we are adding layers on top, but still let's try to get that jellyfish to the tag. Hi Brian! So nice you could make it! Hi Mila! So I roughly cut a piece of the tissue paper. It's a little bit big, but better that way. 
of course we could collage two pieces if that was the thing like or if I would want a certain sea creature here I could then cut it and add it on top so white just so there but now we don't want white we don't want the color the tissue paper so I'm using clear gesso as my adhesive. This Finnabar gesso works beautifully with this. There is difference between different brands. So make sure before you make a big project that the clear gesso you are using works the same way. So add gesso underneath and then a layer on top. It's kind of, um, I could use soft body gel or any kind of collage medium as well, but this way I'm getting the adhesive part, but also, let's now be careful, <laughs> also kind of priming the layer at the same time. I'm now coloring with the liquid acrylics so even though i would use the soft body gel those would stick on top but if i would want to add for example watercolor or watercolor crayons on top then this method is handy because you don't have to add another layer of gesso on top because you're getting it here hi diane hi Anne christine You are from Sweden, so our neighboring country. There we go. I'm trying to get all the edges as well. Tissue paper is so delicate that some of the medium absorbs on top of it also, but better to make sure and add a layer underneath as well. And paper is its most kind of brittle or delicate when it's wet so be careful not to tear it or then might be kind of fun texture added now let me quickly dry this and then let's get rid of the extra totally dry but dry enough for now there's two options for these I'm drying and then cutting the tissue paper but the other option would be to use water and add I go through with a damp brush along the edge and then tear the piece away but there is a possibility if you don't dry it between, let's say, that you actually tear the piece on top of the tag. But if it's already dry and then you go with a wet brush, then the paper will dry, uh, tear from that point. Because like I said, paper is most delicate when it's wet. So that's kind of the breaking point then. So if you want more like a frayed edge, that might be a good solution then there about there we go I will add the link to my announcement post after your live so if you want to check our medium I'm using or for example the name of this tissue paper which I can't remember at the moment then you can do it from there this is uh, Finnabar tissue paper. Heipä hei Kati! Joo, välillä se ei jostain syystä ilmoita, että niin alkaa 
ei tullut sitä. Tai sitten se tulee yli tunnin myöhässä, että se on jo niin mennyt. En tiedä mikä, mikä on. Moikka moi Minna! I noticed that this corner is a little bit flimsy, so let's add just a teeny tiny of just so in there, so it's nicely on the edges as well. There we go. And then, next layer. Let me put this a little bit more a saw or to the view so you can kind of compare where we are going because now I'm doing the bubbles why you need to dry the layer in this case because you are then adding another wet medium on top is that if this is totally wet and you put a stencil on top you might tear the paper which again might cause a lovely texture <laughs> to the project but if you want the pattern to be visible, then that's something you might need to consider just to dry the layer before adding the stenciled layer and then might even dry again. But just be careful. Or if you use, instead of gesso, you use uh, the soft body gels, then again, dry. You don't want to adhere the stencil on top. This is the modeling paste, and this one I think is called Bubbles. This stencil is a little bit older from Finnabar line, but I find it really handy because usually circles go to every project. So it's, it's a great stencil to have. And for this project, I thought that these would be kind of air bubbles. I'm adding, mostly concentrating on this area because I'm repeating this composition. So it's kind of no point to add a lot of on this corner because we are covering them anyway. Acrylic based medium. So again, I have if you have watched my lives before, you know what's underneath my table there, so bucket full of water, so the stencils go there and I can then clean them later. I'm also using this to add some texture underneath the composition. Not that it shows actually that well, just a teeny tiny bit on the finished thing that actually shows this part. But to me it's more about the kind of process anyway. So it's fun to do kind of a smooth surface and then a rough one. So let me see if I can get it to this to the camera. So there you can see that there's some texture underneath. But then there's all the stuff coming on top to hide it. And then it's the composition time. For that I'm starting with one of these, uh, Finnabar chipboard, and I chose this thistle. I think it's called mechanic yeah, mechanical thistle, because this part could be a kind of a underwater plant, or kind of or a part of a sunken ship as well. So I put that in. And as you can see, I didn't add a new medium. So it's just grabbing to the base with the modeling paste. Then the other elements I actually already painted white with white gesso because these two are again my trusty <laughs> hot glue embellishments. So that's the reason I painted these white. So when the time comes I don't have to use the heat tool that much. 
so these won't melt. So they they endure. And I'm using the same modeling paste throughout to the kind of flat layers because these are the most dimensional ones. These little seashells that are coming on top, I'm using just regular glue then. But for these, I'm using just a modeling paste to add here. About there. Then this one and that one. It's kind of buttering bread. If you don't want to kind of, how do you say, use this medium modeling paste, of course you can use the heavy body gel or 3D gel as well. If you feel like you want to use this where it can be seen. But on the other hand, if you don't have this and that and a lot of different mediums and, and jars, then modeling paste works as an adhesive as well. Especially with these kind of lighter embellishments. And well, this one is also glued. And after drying, you can see it's really sturdy. So no worries. Even a metal embellishment will, will hold will be stuck but it needs somewhat drying time so here we go then these ones are coming on top so now we can let this dry for a little while and concentrate on the other embellishments what i might do this point as well is to paint this one white like the other ones so when I'm painting these and these then these can dry and hopefully they will dry so that I don't have to use a heat tool and risk actually melting these embellishments if you are working like not on the clock let's say then it's easier and you can just put everything on and then paint it with white gesso or if you're using resin or something that's not as kind of it's not flammable but that reacts with the heat then you are okay but i like using the hot glue because it's so easy and fast as well so I get the embellishments done and as you can see from here the details are all also very okay just with the hot glue so no need to have resin if you don't want to just a little bit there Partly I'm painting this white because, well, white surface and then the colorants look the same throughout all of these, but also it blocks then the colorants coming on top from soaking into the chipboard and I need a little bit less color, but also that gives me the time to play give that kind of watercolor look because there's the layer kind of blocking the colorant absorbing into the really absorbing chipboard so now we put this aside for a while Brian says that the hot glue embellishments are great yeah I'm really liking it if I'm keeping workshops, that's usually what I try then to avoid because I'm okay 
kind of remembering and being careful not not to then get those all molten but if you're learning something new that might not be the case so it's easier to have then some other medium but when I'm crafting on my own then hot glue is the way I go now I'm choosing some of these art pebbles I'm thinking are these too big or not maybe we'll paint just one if I chose to use it and then a couple of smaller ones let's put these other ones back to the jar and well I'm trying to show you from here that these are almost like opal looking these pearls and the reason for that is that I'm painting just the background not the whole thing although that could be an option too but the look is totally different because now the paint is kind of showing through the layer of the clear plastic so they are a bit more shiny even than if I would just paint this on the rounded side and for that I'm using white pearl of course if you would like to have golden or green or red or whatever color you can use whatever metallic but now I'm going for kind of pearly looking so that's why I chose the white pearl and this surface is so sleek that usually you need a couple of layers even the first one is okay but for these for a more solid look I then use two layers because of the drying time it's usually smarter to do a couple of thin layers rather than one really thick layer so I'm just painting the back sides and well acrylic will stick to these if you have a really wet brush when you start then you might see some kind of droplets coming but just use a dry brush and paint straight from the jar then it will be okay and after a little dry let's see if i can add another layer already here because acrylics are yeah fast drying you might notice that the first layer i did kind of brush strokes this way and now i'm going the other other way trying just to get a solid cover to the whole thing If you want, would like to have an even more kind of opal look, then try the opal magic paints that are changing their color depending on the surface color. But these are kind of just white pearls, or these could even be air bubbles. repeating the same pattern as the bubbles in the background just a couple of more and then we can turn our attention to the seashells while the elements I already adhered to the tag are from a Finabar mold then the sh seashells sorry <laughs> having a bit difficult with that <laughs> word are from another mold also by Prima Marketing but it's not a Finnabar mold this one is from an older collection called Surfboard I think 
Oh, actually, I can show you this is the mold I used for the lady and the kind of... I was thinking that this would be her tail, so kind of a mermaid, but she's kind of hiding underneath all the other things and all the tip of her tail. Is that a tail? Do fish have tails? Or is it there another word for it? Sorry, now I'm completely lacking in vocabulary. But anyway, the end of fish or end of... What are they called? Mermaids. Then let's add some shine to the seashells. Again, these are cast using hot glue and then I painted them white with white gesso. You could add just the acrylic paint on top, but this one gives a little bit different look because then I don't have to go that heavy handedly and also it gives a good kind of grip for the paint because like with the pebbles if you would go straight to the hot glue without the gesso layer you would probably need a couple of layers to get a more solid layer of color and now for these I was just going for kind of mother of pearl this little bit of shine they can be quite pale but just a little bit if you're now wondering why these look totally different it's because of the wax the like final layer I'm adding then on top But just a touch. Because seashells are, well, not the outside actually. I think it's usually on the inside that you can see the mother of pearl tones. But well, we can have some artistic <laughs> like options. Liberties, are they called? So, like that. Now we have the embellishments done. Oh, and this color, by the way, was blue gold opal magic. I totally forgot to say which one I was using. Kind of mixing in the two colors that are here. The blue that I'm going to then add to this tag that's hopefully dry-ish, not that dry, need to dry it a little bit, and also the gold coming on top. So really carefully now. A little bit of bubbling, but now it's dry to the touch. It's not totally dry on the inside, it's kind of a layer now on top, but I'm hoping that I don't smudge them too much. Oh, Kati has a question. Mitä muotta jat käyttänyt noihin simpukoihin ja ynnä muihin? Simpukoihin mä oon käyttänyt tätä. Primo vanhempi muotti surfboard muistaakseni nimeltään. Ja tämä sitten, mitä mä käytin näihin kahteen elementtiin, niin tämä on Finnapairilta. En muista valitettavasti Fairy Queen ehkä nimeltään. Löytyy mun tota, blogipostauksesta linkkien kanssa. Mä liitän sen tähän, tähän sitten liven jälkeen. Ja koitan pistää vielä sulle siis ihan vastauksen niin kirjasin muodossa, että tulee oikeat, oikeat nimet. Kati was asking which moles I used, and I think this one is called Fairy Queen. I might be wrong, but it's in my blog post, and I'll add it 
here after live and then this one is an older prima marketing mold from i think surfboard collection so now some oceanic colors this would be more like a winter <laughs> a winter sea there's some blues but a lot of whites like the ice on top let me rearrange the jars a little bit. Now that I have the gesso layer here, I can go drastic and add drops of color just here. If you have worked with the liquid acrylics before, you know that they are really vibrant. For example, this darker blue, which is Prussian blue, looks almost like black at this stage. It's a beautiful color, beautiful kind of greenish blue, but the original drops are really dark. And this is only possible because there's the gesso layer. If I would be working on top of paper, now these would be absorbing into the chipboard, into the paper, and I couldn't then move those around like I'm doing now. So this just to loose, which I'm then kind of mixing on top of the project and using a wet brush to turn them more like into a watercolor style thing. Brian says, great, my kind of painting. Yeah, this is also my kind of painting. I have done some more like delicate, how do you say it? Not abstract paintings, but this kind of just swooshing with a brush here and there. This is the fun kind of painting in a way because you don't have any expectations. You're just having fun with the color. Some bare, a little bit here, but I'm not trying to get every bubble. Then blue, my trusty rag. If I move quick enough, I'm able to kind of lift some of the color from the bubbles. Don't do delicate, yeah. I admire people who do watercolors, for example. But for the life of our love of me, I can't do it. It might start like concentrating and then it's a burst of color <laughs> in the end. So maybe a little bit darker here, so there's more contrast little bit of the brush and blue to the on top of the lady and a touch here maybe like that then let's move that a little bit to the side because I'm going to do splashes and probably that one that has already Quite a lot of them don't need any more. Like so let's get that dried. Then I'm giving it a quick dry again carefully because of the hot glue thingies. We don't want those melting.
it's not again totally dry but I don't dare to use more there's some kind of little pools of color here let me try to get those lifted even though they would make great like um, shadowy effects but I'm afraid fearing that in the course of this live they won't dry and then they cause some trouble a little bit down the road so as you can see that's not looking like this that's a little bit bland no worries we are getting there but first we need to add our little embellishments just to keep things rolling a little bit faster. I'm using just regular craft glue for these. I could use heavy body gel, I could use 3D gel, I could even use the modeling paste I used for the other embellishments. It's just a matter of speed right now. One, two, three. Now do we add a couple of here? What do you think? I'm already taking the glue. But I'm thinking we are needing some of them here. Otherwise they're too concentrated here. Just a couple. We have one extra and then Shall we do the same here? Maybe. Now I'm adding quite a lot of the glue, so hopefully it will stick, even though this is somewhat hard surface because the hot glue is so smooth. So if we would have more time to watch things just dry then I would use a uh, gel medium rather than this one there I would like to have a third one maybe there three is better than just two Like so. Now there's actually more like a tr sunken treasure here because maybe she would be guarding these big pearls rather than in this, this one, the original. Then we need, hmm, I'm now thinking the, yeah. Let's do it this way, which would be the course to go again with not drying too much because I'm constantly, I'm, I'm saying this a lot, but I'm constantly fearing that I'm melting these. When I'm doing this at home, they don't, then I don't have that problem because if I melt it, then I just add something on top, but now if I melt the lady, it wouldn't look that nice. What I'm now putting here is the clear gesso. And why am I putting it there is because I'm adding the beach on top. So using art stones. I could use the soft body gel mediums like soft matte or soft gloss gel. Especially because it's then turning golden sand, so gloss would be also co cool. If you want to have it matte, then use either the gesso, like I'm doing now, or the matte gel. So I'm just adding a couple of places. And nearer to the composition, I want a little bit more, a little bit dimensional 
let's say. So I'm adding a more, more of the medium there. So there's more chances of these pebbles to grab onto. These are lightweight, so they don't need that much anyway. But still, you need to have some kind of placement there. No, you don't want to melt the lady. Yeah, no, no melting ladies today. <laughs> Although the gesso layer helps a little bit, it guards the shape. Not much, of course, it can't handle the heat like indefinitely, but it helps a little if you have that gesso layer on top, it kind of binds the shape together better. So then you are allowed to add just a little bit of more heat than if it would be without anything. But still, it's not a miracle worker. As you can see, I first added just the gesso and sprinkled these. And now I'm adding kind of drift sand. So I'm grabbing some of the gesso in my brush and then dipping it to the little art stones and then just painting with the really grainy paint across the surface so I get these kind of, well, sandy touches here and there. So there is a kind of collection or gathering of the bigger pebbles and then these lighter touches of sand here and there. Oh, there was some wet paint still because now the sand is turning blue, but no worries. Maybe we want a little bit of the bigger pebbles here. So let's add a dollop of just oh, and then those, maybe a couple of there as well, kind of mixed in. And then just kind of cleaning my brush. Getting the art stones to the project. Thank you, Andrea. So let's get the caps on. If something should fall, then we don't have art stones. Hey, Pameria. Art stones all over the place. If you're just joining, we are turning this into this, so there's some steps still coming. The base is just a chipboard tag covered in tissue paper. Then there's modeling paste, this true stencil, and the composition also is glued together with the modeling paste. Then there's some liquid acrylics, the blue ones, opal magic in the seashells, and white pearl metallic paint underneath these art pebble domes so they are looking like opals or pearls. Now some splashes of white and then we add the golden colors. Blue is my favorite color, blues and teals. I actually grabbed a green one, green liquid acrylic here as well, if I would want to add a third color there, but 
as you can see, I didn't use it. The two colors were enough. Now I'm just diluting the gesso a little so I can flick it better. These are kind of continuing the same bubble effect that I already have going in the background. And why this order? Well, because now I can get dry two layers at the same time. Yeah, blue is a relaxing color. And I read someplace that it's the number one favorite color in the world. Probably because it's the color of water and sky. I don't know if that's the reason, but... So, it was in, in this article that blue is the most light. Of course, these dollops that have a thicker layer of clear gesso won't dry now, but they are dry enough for me to add the colorant on top. Then I will leave it here for some time after the live to dry thoroughly and see if I need to add anything after it's totally dry. Again, if you're not working under a time <laughs> <laughs> time restrictions then leave it air dry especially if you have like these hot glue embellishments if they're resin then just be careful not to boil the mediums because as you know acrylic based products will boil Then let's paint the sand to gold. You could also use acrylic paint to adhere, especially these lighter hard stones. But as this is colorant, it might feel kind of going into waste just as that here so so this way you can just add the colorant on top while the translucent medium does the gluing i'm diluting the paint just a little bit so it will go to the grooves better now that as you can see the layer is not dry yet so I don't have to use that much force to get the colorant in there. I can just lightly dab on top and it will flow. Kind of just these sandy parts here. Just a little bit there. Then let's add some splashes with the gold. Hi, Cindy. Thank you. Oh, about the diluting paints, because Kathy says that she hasn't. Uh, if you're diluting acrylic paints, like I did right now, then maximum dilution or maximum amount you can add water on is about 30% without it affecting the binder 
which then binds the paint to the background. So like I did now, I'm using kind of a wet brush more than just adding a whole, whole lot of uh, water into it. So the bind binder still stays. Ehkä tuon voisi sanoa suomeksi, eli siis kun ma äh, akrylimaaleja ohentaa, niin kannattaa olla varovainen, kuinka paljon siihen laittaa vettä. Jos haluaa ohuemman maalin silleen, että se olisi läpinäkyvä, niin sitten kannattaa käyttää gelmediumia ohennukseen. Mutta jos käyttää ihan vettä, niin maksimissa on 30 prosenttia tai muutos rupeaa vaikuttamaan siihen niin kuin sidosaineeseen, jolloin sitten se ei enää tartu niin hyvin pohjaansa. It seems that my little jar is clogged, so let's do it like this. This one is just ink black liquid acrylic and what I'm using this for is to kind of highlight the shade so again wet brush a little bit diluted paint and I'm just poking <laughs> with the brush kind of trying to get this one into the grooves so it kind of highlights the texture of the sand and I'm adding more more of it nearer to the embellishments kind of where the shadow would be than anywhere else it's just a little little detail if you don't want to do it come on don't do it And if you're still wondering why this looks so different than this, it's the wax, that's the final step that highlights the texture. Because now, especially from the camera, this just looks like one uh, blue thing. But even this might help to raise it a little bit from the background to adding a kind of shadowy, Halo, <laughs> let's say, around. Then as we are working with the wax, I think I don't need to dry because they should be on the bottom layer. And then the wax. This one's my favorite. It's the vintage gold. Now, really delicately, I don't want to turn her into totally golden. I'm not sure if that comes off to the camera. Now you can kind of again see her features. And that's because of the contrast, because otherwise she's blue, but now the highlights are golden. And then, then gives the impression that actually she has features, she's not just blue blob anymore. And now I'm using the same wax to go over the, well, every kind of dimensional thing, adding it a little bit to the edges and delicately to the thistle, which one is now an underwater thistle. And then I go around the whole edge of the tag. And as you can see, I'm using my finger because then I get the really delicate touch that I'm not turning the whole project now golden because that's not what we want. We have worked hard to get different colors to it. So Even though some layers are hidden underneath, we don't want everything to be of the same color. Thank you, Brian. Go enjoy your pizza. We are almost done. So not much for you to watch later. Just the finishing little details. Let's hide that little jaw a little bit with the golden now and 
feel like it touches to some of these bubbles as well. Like so. I think we are more or less done. Looking similar, not the same, but similar. Thank you, Maria. So do you have any questions? If I missed anything, I'll go through them afterwards. I clean up a little bit and then, then go through them. But now's your time if you have any questions about this project or something else. And of course, after your live, you can add questions and especially if you tag me, then I'll answer them. At least nothing just yet. But just remember, you can always email me or message me or contact me in Instagram if you have any questions. Kiitos Mari. Kiitos, Kati. Thank you. It's just a simple... Kiitos, Heidi. <laughs> just a simple little project, but the kind of texture adds a lot to it. Thank you, Judy. Because there's just, if you look at it, there's just a couple of elements, but there is sleek surfaces of the molded embellishments, and then there's the texture of the sand. So even if you have just a couple of elements by adding something textured like this or crackle paste or uh, like the micro beads or something, you can then kind of fill in. So you don't always have to have tons and tons of embellishments and elements and then you can still make a cohesive project. Kiitos Tina. Oh, actually, I said that I have kind of two tricks before we started. So the tricks were to use clear gesso to adhere the tissue paper instead of uh, using a soft body gel medium and then adding gesso on top, because then you can kind of get two birds with one stone. And the other one is using modeling paste throughout. Again, you just need kind of one medium for that because you can use that as an adhesive for this one. So those are the two tricks. Or maybe using these as well, or adding the texture. I don't know. Hopefully you get some inspiration out of this. Thank you, Cindy. Yeah, underwater, I think it was kind of appropriate for summer. It has been quite hot, not only this week, but the previous week. So I think beach has been the destination of many here in Finland as well. So <laughs> yeah, I, I read it underwater. <laughs> it could be underwear. Maybe she's a Victoria's Secret model in a mermaid suit or something. <laughs> but yeah, if you haven't got any more questions, then I'll say bye for now. Wishing you a lovely evening. Thank you so much for coming. Kiitoksia taas jälleen kerran. And, well, if you're watching the recording, just tag me. Need to try text paper under those pebbles. Yeah, works. Works nicely. If you have any kind of uh, old book pages or even like vintage little photos or something, they work nicely. Like those melange, or what are they called? The jewelry parts. But yeah, bye for now. Thank you so much. And I'll be seeing you again next month. Kiitos, bye! <laughs>